breaking news for the fans of the house of Guerlain. Some of their iconic perfumes have been just recently re-released. And if you want to find out what changed in the packaging and in the notes, please keep on watching this video in which I'll be breaking that down for you. But of course, give it thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel if you're here for the first time. Once you're done with that, we can get started. Everyone, welcome back! Today I have exciting news from one of my most favorite brands, which name I absolutely cannot pronounce correctly, because as you know, French is not really a language I'm comfortable with, so feel free to correct uh, how I say Guerlain in the comments, or maybe you can actually help me out with the pronunciation, because although I've already googled it, couple of times I still can't get it right, but hopefully I will one day because I sincerely love this brand and what they are doing and how they are doing it, because you know, Guerlain is one of those uh, brands, those few brands that doesn't try to copy other perfumes and really releases often quite legendary fragrances and some of their iconic perfumes have been recently re-released and that is what we'll be talking about in this video. So if you like fragrances like Jiki, like Nahema, like Apre Londe, and I know some of them are not easy to find in the shops, I guess they are maybe exclusive to Guerlain's boutiques or you can also find them online, but it's not uh, an easy thing to go to your local shop and find fragrances like um, Chamat. But Guerlain re-released these uh, iconic perfumes that uh, have been around for a very, very long time and there are lots of changes and I want to start with the first one that is most obvious because that is the packaging and the whole presentation. As you know, many of these fragrances had their unique bottles and uh, the design of new ones is all the same and actually it's the bottle that might be familiar to those who own Mitsoko. So it's kind of like the same flacon and uh, there is only a different label on each of them and I like that they color them so I guess the color of the label sort of um, has reference to the way how the fragrance smells. So for example of Nahema it's like this burgundy radish uh, sort of color. And uh, so with that being said uh, that is the presentation part, the visual part. There is another change and that is of course um, the notes breakdown, so we'll be comparing today notes of original perfumes to these new year releases. And the final change is the concentration of these perfumes. They are now re-released as Eau de Toilette and as you know Eau de Toilette is um, weaker than Eau de Parfum, it's stronger than Eau de Cologne and Eau de Toilettes tend to be fresher, more diffusive, brighter, lighter. So with that being said, uh, let's actually get started with uh, the perfumes. And the first one I want uh, to talk about is um, Apre Londe, only because um, it's also the only one I have among these um, new fragrances. And actually, I was really excited to find this perfume in one niche boutique in Frankfurt, because it is not available in the shops. And I was on a hunt for it because it's a truly iconic fragrance from Guerlain with notes of anise, cassis, neroli, lemon, bergamot, violet, orris root, mimosa, carnation, sandalwood, ylang ylang, vetiver, rose, jasmine, iris, heliotrope, vanilla, benzoin, musk, styrax and amber. It was um, revolutionizing because uh, in this fragrance um, for the first time we used aldehydes, so specifically anisic aldehyde and um, if you like aldehydes I've already created a top list of my most favorite fragrances with the note of aldehyde and so April Day was launched way back in the days, actually in 1906 and uh, it's a fragrance in Guerlain style and I really like Guerlain's DNA, as I call it their signature powderiness. It's about violet and heliotrope, iris, lots of mimosa and the sparkling, a little bit sharp, medicinal, herbaceous uh, anisic aldehyde that is in there. So 
for the new uh, formulation, they left cassis and anise from top notes. Uh, from the middle notes, there is violet, carnation, and powdery notes, so very abstract powdery notes. Probably that is some replacement for mimosa and orris root. Maybe they worked with synthetics because natural stuff is very expensive. And then in the base, there is iris and vanilla. So it seems like it is going to be also powdery and anisic. Maybe not as strong as this one, but it's not, you know, most overpowering fragrance. So we just need to wait and see how it will smell. From the difference in the notes, I can tell that um, the New York Detail is going to be less complex than the original perfume but I guess that's kind of obvious. And on that note, we are moving on to the next perfume, which is called uh, Chant Aron, and it's in this aldehydic style, which was very popular back in the days, fragrance with citruses, gardenia, aldehydes, a plum, honeysuckle, jasmine, ylang ylang, cloves, a vetiver, heliotrope, olibanum, sandalwood, benzoin, and vanilla. This is a spicy, aldehydic, narcotic, floral fragrance with this interesting, powdery, fruity twist. And uh, for the new formulation, they left honeysuckle in there, citrusy notes, as well as gardenia and jasmine. There is ylang ylang, sandalwood and vanilla, so you can already tell. No spices, no plums, so probably it's gonna be just a lighter version also without aldehydes, which might scare some people these days, although I personally really want um, to have an aldehydic comeback. <laughs> so with that being said, it's not the one that I'm very, very excited about, because some of the notes I really, really loved in the original one uh, were taken out for the new formula, but who knows how it will smell, as um, I've already told you I really like this brand and uh, what they are doing for their commercial, their exclusive and um, all range of perfumes that they offer. So with that being said, uh, we can actually move on to something once again iconic and in my opinion uh, something super unique. I can't really tell you stories of all these fragrances, but if you are willing to share maybe your personal experience with some of these, you are very welcome to do that in the comments, because as you know, I am always excited to hear from you, and I'm sure your comments are going to be helpful for other people. So specifically about this fragrance, which is Bol de Nuit, and this is definitely not for everyone. It's one of those truly unique perfumes and even I have hard times with it and uh, you know I'm really not a newbie to fragrances. I don't shy away from strong perfumes and from challenging fragrances and you know I love uh, probably everything from Guerlain. If I don't love it, I like it, but Vol de Nuit that was originally created in 1933 is definitely uh, a serious fragrance, probably because it has very sharp note of galbanum in there, as well as narcissus, bergamot, orange blossom, ton of citrusy notes, lots of floral notes, which are so common for Guerlain, and I personally really love them, like violets, iris, um, there is rose and jasmine, carnation, aldehyde, oak moss, orris root, sandalwood, spices, and musk. So it's kind of like a dry, sharp, floral, but like also green perfume. And for the new version, they of course left galbanum and narcissus, which are kind of like the core of this composition. There is bergamot and patty green, which is a new note uh, introduced to Bol de Nuit. There are spices, jasmine, patchouli, which is once again a new note. No oak moss, no sandalwood, uh, and uh, no orris root, which um, is a pity in my opinion because I like those notes, but there is vanilla, iris, and amber, so maybe it's going to be ambery and spicier, and with this patchouli maybe it's going to be interesting in the combination with galbanum, so we just need to wait and see because sometimes, you know, notes might not sound that exciting, but then in the end fragrance actually turns out to be absolutely beautiful, so I'm excited for Vol de Nuit, maybe it's going to be more wearable for me personally because once again with the original one it's not an easy fragrance for me to pull out. And with that being said, uh, we are definitely moving on to the perfume that, um, you know, seemed to be always a true mystery to me and uh, this absolutely phenomenal fragrance uh, on the market, which is Nahema. And 
it can be considered maybe a rose masterpiece from long long time ago because Nahima was released in 1979 and it's unique in different ways so a part of rose there is peach and aldehydes, uh, green notes, bergamot, hyacinth, lilac, ylang ylang, jasmine, lily of the wally woodsy notes, vanilla and passion fruit. So to use passion fruit back in the days was probably a huge thing and for the new version they really really replaced um, floral notes just with rose and hyacinth so a ton of the floral notes were just taking out. There was peach and passion fruit still in this fragrance, uh, no citruses, you know, no aldehydes um, and they were sandalwood with patchouli once again. So um, from the notes it reminds me of another fragrance I really love from Guerlain and it's in their exclusive French called Chipper Fatale if I'm not wrong and that play of peach and patchouli is just amazing and I was so close uh, to purchase it a couple of months ago but unfortunately I didn't and who knows maybe this new or the toilet version of Nahema is going to be similar to that perfume. I think there are high chances they are going to be alike. Uh, so um, once again I'm excited to smell this one and we are moving on to the next one which has never been that exciting to me just because from the notes it seems like a mix of Nahema and maybe Vol de Nuit. It's called Chamat and there is hyacinth, aldehydes, rose, jasmine, bergamot, galbanum, rose, lilac, jasmine, lily of the wally, clove, some balmy notes, woodsy notes, amber notes and vanilla. So once again for the new concentration and new ver version of this perfume lots of the notes were taken out. There are still hyacinth and galbanum and those are rather sharp notes in perfumes. There is cassis uh, ylang ylang, jasmine, vanilla and sandalwood. So I hope that with these fragrances that are more challenging to me, like Chamade, like um, Vol de Nuit, maybe new formulations are gonna be more modern. Who knows? And we are moving on to probably most exciting fragrance for the majority of you because uh, Jiki is definitely a super well-known fragrance because it's one of the first fougeres on the market. It was uh, absolutely revolutionary as it was first released, uh, I believe in 18... yeah, 1889. So it has been around for a very long time, one of the first fragrances um, that has ever been done and it's an exciting one with raspberry... oh, what am I talking about? With rosemary, sorry, uh, with berg bergamot and lemon and mandarin, lavender and tonka bean, you know, this is like uh, what you need to have in the fougeur, lavender and coumarin. So uh, there is oris root and basil and jasmine, vanilla, spices, woods, amber. So Jiki is well known for being a beautiful, sweet, aromatic fougeur and for the new formulation they actually added this new note of Paligonium, which I have no idea what it is, so if you can actually educate me on that, that would be amazing. There are still lavender and coumarin, of course. Also woodsy notes, that same rosemary, so if you really enjoy that note and um, you really like it in Jiki, then don't worry, it's still in the new one. Uh, but other than that, there is also vanilla and opoponax, so who knows, maybe it's gonna be just lighter than the original one, because I don't think there is a major problem with coumarin and lavender, but I can totally understand why they might reformulate lots of their iconic fragrances and brought, bring them back actually was a nice idea too, but I guess this whole reformulation uh, happened due to the new regulations and you know some materials are not safe and as you might already noticed lots and lots of uh, very popular fragrances that have been around for literally many many years have been reformulated and um, I hope that Guerlain's perfumers were really really careful and as precise with um, uh, the the replication of the original scent of the perfume um, as they could. So I'm definitely excited and please let me know if you are too or maybe not. Maybe you have uh, some experience with these fragrances and I would love to hear from you guys because you know I love to chat with you. If you have any questions left I'm here to answer them and if you would like me to review these fragrances once they appear in the shops uh, but they are already on their official website please let me know that too 
it and of course give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed watching it subscribe to my channel ring the bell in order to receive notifications and of course check me out on social media as well as check out the description box for more helpful information and uh, please stay tuned smell good have an awesome day and we'll see each other really soon bye guys